Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome so much for, thank you so much for joining us for our first info session of 2021. My name is Rebecca Davis. I'm the Career Services Manager here at UAGC. This session is being recorded and we will get started in about one minute. Again, thank you everyone for joining us today for our first info session with the Federal Highway Administration. This is our first employer session of 2021. Again, my name is Rebecca Davis. I'm the Career Services Manager here at University of Arizona Global Campus. And just wanna let you know that this session is being recorded and will be emailed out to everyone who registered for the session within one to two business days. You do have the option to use the chat feature or the Q&A feature. We will monitor any questions coming in. Today's session is about 30 minutes, so we may not get to all questions today, um, but feel free to post your questions and Career Services will work to answer those. If you have any additional questions, any career-related questions, or just want to learn more about Career Services, you can email us at careerservices at UA gc.edu. So let's get started. I'm very excited to welcome Janez Harris. Uh, she was selected in 2020 as District of Columbia Division's Office Transportation Finance Manager. Janez serves as a key technical advisor providing financial technical assistance and guidance to the DC Division and District Department of Transportation. Janez holds a bachelor's degree of business administration in marketing from Pace University and a master's degree of business administration in finance from University of Arizona Global Campus, formerly Ashford University. She is currently pursuing a doctorate in finance from Capella University. Welcome, Janez. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Rebecca. Well, let's just go ahead and jump into it. Janez, could you explain what the Federal Highway Administration does? Yes, um, well, Rebecca, the, the Federal Highway Administration is about working with our partners to strengthen our world-class highway system. Now, FHWA, um, Federal Highway Administration, is a organization within the United States Department of Transportation that supports states, and local government in the design, construction, and maintenance of the nation highway system and various um, federal and tribal owned lands. So through federal, through financial and technical assistance to states and local government, FHWA is responsible for ensuring that Americans or America roads and highways continue to be amongst the safest and the most technologically sound in the world. So FHWA is always looking for talented individuals to be part of strengthening our highway system. So that's a little bit in a nutshell of what FHWA does. We were all about, you know, making sure that we're strengthening our world-class highway system. Well, and on that note, could, would you share some of the career paths available within the Federal Highway Administration? Yes. Well, some of the career paths that are available at FHWA is not just construction or engineering. We're talking about um, civil rights, finance, which is my discipline, um, um, operations, planning, research, development, and technology infrastructure. We even have like chief counsel areas that people may not know about. Um, and another one that I can think of is innovative program uh, development. So as a student, how anyone that is um, watching this or listening now to get into FHWA mainly is through our FHWA student and recruitment um, grad or recent grad program. What I'm going to do is I'm going to 
click that link to the chat box and anyone wants at their leisure to check that out. I did that right. Let's see where it says more chat box and then over here for everyone. Hopefully everyone sees that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and as an alum of the university, we'd love to just hear more about your own pathway. Well, yes, yes. I started working at FHWA as a pathway, um, pathway finance intern. So it was part of that whole student and recent grad program that is um, one way students mainly get into FHWA. I was a pathway intern in, our, in Alaska in 2013. Then I was accepted into the um, professional development program as a finance specialist. I traveled around the United States for two years. I went to North Dakota, Virginia, Pennsylvania, and headquarters, learning about how my discipline and the agency works together. And then when I was done with, the, with that program, I was placed, permanently placed in um, Arkansas. And I stayed there until 2020 when I um, got a promotion and became the transportation finance manager of the DC division. So a lot of um, traveling, a lot of wonderful opportunities that I got. So that was my career path. Sounds like you've been to some pretty interesting places. Yes. Good. How did having a degree from Ashford University, now UAGC, impact your career path? Well, one thing I have to say is as um, a, a degree within um, the University of Arizona Global Campus, when I was here, it was called Ashford University, um, impacted my career path was uh, allowing me to be mobile. I'm from New York, born and raised. So if I went to a brick and mortar school like I did for my undergrad at Pace University, I would not have considered doing a finance internship in Alaska. I would not have taken the time to apply to different locations um, like I did. So that having at Ashford University, um, University of um, um, Arizona Global Campus um, degree really gave me that mobility to apply to jobs that was outside of New York. It really opened up a whole new world for you, it sounds yes. like. Excellent. Well, we know that the federal job search is quite different from, let's say, a civilian or traditional job search. What advice do you have for our students and alumni who are trying to navigate a federal job search? Yes, well, the first thing is to start off with the FHWA's student and recent grad programs. So I put that up there in the chat box. It's the www.fhwa.gov or .dot.gov slash careers. Now, 99% of the jobs needs to go through um, usajobs.gov. And I'll get that link also. Um, 99% of the jobs are listed at that link there. I don't know why it doesn't show the link, but that's, that's how it looks. Now, the only exception to that is the Dwight, Al Dwight Eisenhower, pardon me, um, Transportation Fellowship Program. And that one has different specifications to that. And I'll put that link up there for everyone to see too. Um, that one is a little bit different. 99% of all the jobs need to go through usajobs.gov. Now, in reference to how to apply for a federal job or the resume and interviewing, which is a different animal, which is a different structure, there is information on usa.gov that talks about you know, how to apply for a federal job, 
how, what your resume is supposed to look like, because it's going to be different. All of that information I'm going to put into the link to it. It has like list of events that's happening. Students look at those events, read it and apply it and um, use USA because that's the only, that's 99% of all the jobs that are federal, that's from FHWA, you're going to have to apply through that way. So learn about the different events and you, you, you will be on the road for uh, success. Now, the other thing that I want you to understand, everyone, is to please be patient. The application process takes anywhere between 60 to 150 days, everyone, after the job announcement closed. So my advice is to problem solve out a plan of action to how to stay informed of your application status while financially finding alternative means to supporting yourself during the process. It is worth, it is worth it at the end, okay? That is such great advice. Absolutely. Um, what skills are the recruiters looking for in the Federal Highway Administration? What are some of those transferable skills or hard skills? If you could talk a little bit about that. Yes. Well, within the entry level position, analytical, technical, and communication skills are important. Leaders within FHWA does a great job at connecting how, what you do with the law and regulation, because you're going to do a lot of that in the entry level position. You're going to be reading a lot of law, a lot of regulations. Leaders will have you in meetings with them so you can see how building relationship is done. What you will be doing is bringing that technical and analytical interpretation and being able to write it within the FHWA's jargon. So that's something that you're going to be doing a lot of um, at, in the entry level um, position. Now, once you develop those skills, you will be required to develop your relationship building skills. And that would involve opportunities to lead meetings, write more detailed reports and following up on requirements. Now that, and that involves understanding your partner's interests and FHWA interests. So those sort of skills, relationship building, um, technical, analytical, and good writing skills and communication, that's really important to see. This is such great information. I'm taking notes myself. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, what advice would you give to your undergraduate self? Keep going. It's worth the work. You know, anything worth having is absolutely worth the work. When I was an undergrad at Pace University, I would, would continue. If I was able to go back in time, I would look at my younger self and say, keep going. It is worth the work because me being part of, I, I'm very grateful to sit here and tell Ashford University students and alumni about FHWA. And it was something that by being persistent and never giving up and understanding that anything worth having is going to, is worth the work, you know? So please take the time to apply, take the time to go to those links that's talking about um, the notification event Take the time to use those tools so that you present the best aspect of you. And then just be consistent in understanding that it's going to take time, but once you are committed to something, you're going to find a way to problem solve it out to, to make it happen. And once you're in the federal FHWA, you're going to get a lot of professional development. You just it's, it's a fantastic um, agency to be part of. And I'm going off, going a little off script here, but I read somewhere on the website that the Federal Highway Administration is one of the best places to work in the federal government. Could you talk a little bit about why that is? 
Well, one of the things that I've noticed is a professional development um, aspect where anyone who is motivated to be a leader, there is some type of training within FHWA that is um, accessible to them. Our leadership is really good about making sure that any type of opportunities that someone wants to advance, they're given that opportunity in, 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 in a nutshell. And I think that's a really great thing for students to understand. So where you're starting out, the entry level position, there are certain things within FHWA like an IDP, which is, um, I forgot the, 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 the official name. We Individual name. Development Plan. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and so like, once you have that discussion, you're showing that to your, your, your supervisor or whomever your leader is, they're going to support that and give you those tools so that you can succeed. And that's something that not too many agencies are doing. And then it's just very much of an inclusive environment. So that's that's the one thing that I notice as, as an alumni is just forever learning and wanting to be giving that support to move forward. That's the greatest you know, thing that any employee would want out of their employer and their leadership and their staff. Constantly growing. Yes, absolutely. And very applicable to our, our students who are in that same position of wanting to constantly grow and learn. Perfect. Yes. Um, we did have a question come in. I think it's a question we get quite often in the career services office. Is there an age restriction for when you apply for the Federal Highway Administration? No, not at all. There is no age restriction at all. It is based on merit. It's based on your skills. That's the reason why they created this USA, um, USAjob.gov. They're basing it on your skills. So as a student, uh, your best way to get into FHWA is through the recent, um, the student and recent grad programs. And there are four or five of them that's listed. One of them is the Pathways um, Internship. Another one is the PDP. And then there was um, P, it's a PMF. And then the Dwight, Howe, um, the Dwight Eisenhower program where they give you um, um, money. Those are the, the avenues that if someone's um, experience isn't at that level yet, but Trust and believe I'm a wonderful example that those programs are fantastic. Another question just came in, another great question. Uh, are you required to move with the Federal Highway Administration? That's an excellent question. You are not required to move. The reason why I pause is depending on students, you're going to be at an entry level position and you're going to have to think of where you want to see yourself in the next five, 20 years retiring at FHWA. And in order for anyone, and this is just my advice and this is my perspective, in, the, in order for you to lead not only yourself, but also lead whatever program you're gonna do and lead the agency, one needs to understand how things are done from different regions of the United States of America. And in order for that to happen, sometimes just being in those regions is really important. Things that you cannot, those soft skills, you cannot get just by being in one region. So, that's something to think about because that would be um, a, a um, positive if you do move to see how the agency is overall if you want to um, take that approach towards leadership. It's not written in stone. It's not a requirement. It's just something to think about to broaden your scope. So when you are addressing um, our partners, 
you're understanding how to address them from different point of views and building relationships that's going to be beneficial to not only FHWA's requirements and interests, but also beneficial to them, um, our partners, and making sure that at the end of the day, we're getting stuff accomplished. That's such great advice. And I feel like we're almost getting the inside track from you. So this is great information. Thank you. You're welcome. We had a couple more questions come in. Um, is there a pathway or program for those transitioning out of the military? Is there one that's specifically for military? Is that the question specifically? Because we do have a pathway internship and we have the, the professional development program, also known as the PDP. And, um, you know, for, for military, it's no, um, they're not excluded at all. They're included into, into that equation. Perfect. Are there any jobs within the Federal Highway Administration that require a security clearance? That's a, that's a very good question. I don't, do not have an answer for that. I know that I, I did have to go through a clearance, but it wasn't like the high level clearance. Mm -hmm. I, now this I'm, um, I'm not sure about, so don't quote me on it. I, th I believe any government job you have some level of clearance that is required. You have to do the fingerprints and stuff like that. The, the degree of it, I don't know. Now the, now the questions are coming in hot and heavy. So we have a couple more minutes to take questions. And then I have one final question for Janice while we have her. Mm -hmm. um, but one question that came in that I think you can answer is, what if the student program is not li yet listed on USA Jobs? Is there another way to apply for it? Due to 99% of the jobs are listed on usajob.gov, that would be the primary way where the, the, the jobs are announced. The only 1% is that, that Dwight Eisenhower one. There are times when we do get grant money or with, from Congress that's specific to students, but the majority, 99% of it is via um, usajobs.gov, uh, and that would have to go through that way. Perfect. Now, I'm speaking to students that may, I'm not traditionally students, and when I say traditionally, I'm thinking of individuals that came right out of high school to college, and they have zero, they have limited experience under their belt. There are individuals that I'm talking to right now that are go that went back to school that have a lot of skills. My advice to you is to look at those um, applications, those authorings, and see if you can do a GS seven or nine based on your experience at um, now. Don't limit yourself to only applying to the the, the students and recent grad applicants applications the plus to anyone that's a student is resume how to get um, why not do the event that was talking about interviewing styles, apply, and why not, you know? Great advice. Thank you so much. And we had some great questions come in. And so for any reason we don't get to your question today, you can always email it to career services at UAGC. Dot edu. Um, career services will try to answer it. And if we can't, we will connect with Janez um, to help us answer that question after the webinar, if that's okay. One final question that I had is, what am I not asking? What should our students and alumni know? Well, from the time I've 
from the time I've been here, the shutdown furlough have happened a couple of times. Now, because FHWA have alternative funding sources, the agency was not directly affected by the lapse in annual appropriation. So in other words, FHWA's employees perform their function without any lapse in their normal pay, in their leave, in other civic duties rules. So that was one of the things that I wanted to give you a heads up. And anyone that um, is on the call right now knows what um, I'm talking about. You know, that's a major fact, some, something to think about. Our agency isn't affected by that. Another thing is to know that we're a part of the executive branch. What rules or laws that are passed by Congress, we are required to enact them. Now, the skills of relationship building is very crucial to this enacting, enforcing these laws. You must know your audience because how I talk to people in Arkansas when I was a financial specialist is going to be different than how I talk to individuals um, in DC. It's all about emotional intelligence. Building relationship is something that's really important when you're enforcing, you know, laws that are passed by Congress. You have to have that level of awareness, emotional intelligence, EI, 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 because, you know, at the end of the day, we're part of the United States government, the executive branch. Such great information, Janice. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, as I mentioned, if you have any questions that did not get answered or you think of a question after the fact, please email us at careerservices at uagc.edu. And this final slide here will share uh, information about if you want to learn more about the Federal Highway Administration, please visit the links below. A lot of great information on there to view. Um, and I just thank everyone for coming today, especially thank Janez for being with us today and sharing great insight into the work she does, especially uh, as an alum of our university. Yes, love it, thank you. And just ask you to save the date for our next info session. It will be on April 13th. So just keep an eye on your email for an uh, invitation to that one. But thank you so much. Such a great, uh, such a great way to start our week. So thank you so much for joining us, Janez. Have a, a great rest of your week, everyone.